Uhuru, independence for Kenya. Guests at the independence celebrations are presented to Prince Philip. In line here, Mr. Duncan Sands, Mr. Malcolm MacDonald, the new Governor General, and Jomo Kenyatta, ex Mau Mau leader, now Prime Minister. So after 68 years of British administration, Kenya becomes a sovereign African nation. A time of rejoicing, not surprisingly mingled with some regret. Many Europeans who've grown up with Kenya now regard themselves among the dispossessed. Prince Philip also opened the new independent parliament. The occasion, obviously enjoyed by its members, reminds us that it's with a British system of law and government that Kenya looks to the future. Besides acknowledging the legacy which Britain leaves, Kenya has elected to remain within the Commonwealth. After Prince Philip had read the speech from the throne, Mr. Kenyatta was to express his hopes for a happy continuation of the special relationship Kenya has always had with Great Britain. We can build in Kenya, he said, a country in which race, tribe, colour or creed form no barrier. This was certainly the theme of the state ball, another feature of the celebration. The Prime Minister partnered Miss Celia Sand. Prince Philip took the floor with the wife of Uganda's Prime Minister. Apart from the more formal aspects of the British way of life, Africa has adopted some of the lighter side. And come to think of it, the rhythms of Africa are at the roots of Western pop music. When that music is played by Africans in Africa, that really is a new twist. <laughs> 